yesterday. People hopefully went out and did some observations. I see something on every board, so that's good. Um, and you've done some storytelling since you got back, which is also great. Um, how far have people gotten to their storytelling? Have people pretty much gotten their observations out under their board? Like if you're 50% done, raise your hand. 75%, 100%. Wow. Well, there were a lot of no hands. So there's a lot of zero. Hands Zero, twenty-five percent. Ten percent. Okay. All right. We need to do some warming up this morning. I think. Okay. Love to hear so far. Just throw out some words or maybe some experiences um, about the last what sixteen hours or something since we last saw you. You were out. You hopefully did some look, ask, and try. Who looked? Who asked? Good. Who tried? Uh, some hands came down. Okay. All right. So just a few words about the experience. You know, thinking about yourself for a minute. Like, what did I say? It was um, things that you, you you felt, you thought, you did, you said that were maybe different or, or interesting for you. Um, I found it helpful to just kind of, um, I'm an undergrad student here, so I found it helpful to just kind of think of my daily routine. You know, on a typical Monday, what do I do um, as far as, going outside, okay, trying to make classes, just kind of how my day goes and thinking in okay. terms of winter. People like to complain about winter a lot, so it's almost like people are being more negative maybe than they actually think. Okay, so we're, okay. Anything else about your own process or just what it was like was for you? It was different. Did you guys leave last night sort of with a different mindset? Was it awkward for anyone? Taking pictures was, was awkward. Yeah. I like stood there and like watched them like slip all over. So how was that? <laughs> huh? How was that? A word. It was... It, Quite amusing. Um, <laughs> deciding to be mindful, making the conscious decision. Mindful. Yeah. So really quickly comparing, what were some of the differences between look, ask, and try, and, and how they felt for you, and what you got out of them? Do you, more importantly, like what do you think you got differently if, as you were comparing what came out of those different approaches? You were more comfortable with look and try look than and ask. Try, yeah. those were like those are things I was more familiar doing than. Mm -hmm. Asking people, right. people how they feel about certain things. Okay. Did you get different results by doing different things? Did you learn different things? I felt like at Dartmouth, everyone complains about the winter so much that we actually got, I got a lot of similar responses in the ask part because okay. everyone talks about it all the time. It converged quickly. Well, it converged exactly, but mm -hmm. with the look okay. and try, there's a little more diversity. Okay. Responses. I think you can. At the same time, with ask. Um, is the kind of thing where it's like a little uncomfortable, but like I like asked like a college worker like about her routine coming to work, and like it's like nerve wracking, but at the same time like after you ask, it's like it can be rewarding a lot easier because apparently she was also like asking random people lots of questions because she was doing like a psych thing, and so she was like completely willing to talk to me. Yes, that's surprising how willing people are. Like, how often does someone just ask you what you think about something? It's kind of flattering. Health system, it sort of looked like this. Here's this, and here's that, right? Here's like even keel. Right now we are feeling, when you started, hold on, when you came here, before you heard David Kelly talk, you were like, I'm gonna start down here and tell me to stop. Stop there. Stop, okay, you just couldn't really know what was gonna happen, okay. And then uh, when you went out last night. <laughs> Excited to go out. <laughs> there. Okay. Right now, where are we? Yeah. Higher. Yeah. Higher. Ooh. Cool. Okay. I'm doing this by voice. Yeah. Some around here. Okay. All right. Okay. So we'll keep plotting. This is very scientific. Okay. We could just go. Okay. Let's go brainstorm. We've got some observations. You know, I could go brainstorm now, but. This is design thinking. And that would be way too easy, so that's not what we're going to do. Um, instead, we stop at this point, not stop, but pause, to go a little long way around and go from like all this sort of concreteness, like 
concrete observations that we have. And instead of going straight to some concrete ideas, um, get a little abstract, get to a higher level point of view about what's going on. Not like, okay, coats are a problem, let's design a coat hook, and um, brushing your teeth in the cold is a problem, so let's create a new toothbrush. But actually, let's take a point of view about the situation of cold here in Dartmouth in winter, um, and zoom back and try and ask ourselves, what's really important? Actually, is that coat hook the most important thing I can do? I don't know. I need to step back and look at the whole picture and decide if that's really the first thing I want to do. Do I want to put all the energy into that idea or maybe into something else? And that takes like a little bit more of a bird's eye point of view. We have to ask ourselves what import what's important and then what do you want to do about it? This is why people come to IDEO so they don't just jump at the first thing. They, they can ask us some pretty hard questions and we'll try to wrap our heads around whatever it is and help our clients understand what's really important and what should they do about it before we just dive into something that's cool but maybe actually not the most important or lucrative or impactful thing that they could do. So the adding up of ideas? Ooh, adding up, adding, good word. What more? Combining. Bring it combining. All together. Putting it all together, absolutely. So here's the definition, composition, combination of diverse concepts into a whole. But So it is not just, somewhere in here I thought it was, yeah, it's, it's, it's more than, it's things are you know greater than some of their parts, right, is the idea here. I asked you to start sharing, you said, start to like have an insight about what you've seen. Um, like, hey, it's really not that bad, or whatever. Um, these frameworks that we're gonna talk about, we try to derive opportunities, like bigger opportunities, and maybe the, the coat hook is the opportunity. Um, but, well, not the coat hook, but addressing problems with coats could be an opportunity here. And then an idea would be, you know, any one of different kinds of coat hooks or whatever it is you could do. Um, to address that. So that's kind of the journey that we're going to go on basically for the rest of this day. It's going to look linear here, and it actually really isn't for us at IDEA. We tend to bounce around pretty fluidly. Um, so that's just a disclaimer. But we're going to do it. So with the disclaimer that it's somewhat organic, for real, we're going to do it in a bit more linear way. Um, oops. That's okay. This is going to run off the page a little bit. Um, but we really want to kind of get to are themes and opportunities. And so a theme, just forget all the text on top, basically as you have a bunch of observations, things start to pop out to you as a theme. I heard this twice, I heard this 10 times, I have a gut feel about this, whatever. And it could be um, about anything. And these are just a few different examples of the products that we've worked on. Again, we wanna make sure that what we're noticing is spanning the tangible, like I'm noticing things about coats, but I'm also noticing things about how people are thinking and feeling, right, up at the top. If you're not kind of, if, if your post-its are not roughly half and half, hmm, dig deep and pull something out that's on the other end, okay? Cool. So these are all sort of, these are themes, right? You, they talk to a bunch of people who are using them or whatever, and they realize this is a stressful situation. What's important? They've decided that these are important observations. What's important? Okay, what to do about it? Going down the other side. Those were themes, these are opportunities that build. So, <coughs> kind of get the idea here. So, Big user controls and interfaces that are obvious and fail safe. That's an opportunity. Coming to those insights, those themes, those opportunities is tough. This is what my clients say, hey, I'm glad that's you and not me, as I um, was giving them the future of certain kinds of ingredients in the world for them. Um, it's a big strategy project. So we use something to help us. Frameworks. What does this mean? plan. Structure. A structure. Yep. Yeah, a structure. <laughs> or um, a support for something else that's being constructed, right? This is, it kind of lived at the top of my, our little parabola there, process parabola. <clears throat> and it's the foundation for everything that comes after it. That's the only reason we do them. They're not an end in and of themselves. Um, and it's, it's our view of reality. You guys all have a different one, and there's no one right framework. You guys have all gone out and tried to understand the problem of winter and Dartmouth, and you have a different picture of what the answer is, maybe, and that's fine. It's your view of reality, it's your way of sharing with other people and capturing it for yourself in a way that you can build from, and that's all it is. There's no one right answer when it comes to frameworks. So because this is the more, most sort of abstract part, first of all, I spoke really quickly. How much of that sunk in? Like. 75%? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's just make it real. Who here um, has not had a dog in their lives? True still on the whiteboard. That's it? <coughs> wow. Awesome. Okay. So most people have had a dog. 
or know someone who's had a dog. Who here does not know anyone who's had a dog? Or seen a dog? <laughs> great, okay. Excellent. So, um, <laughs> so it's a great way to place to start because we're all kind of familiar with dogs and the people who have them, right? And so um, we're gonna do a quick exercise here. We're gonna sketch four frameworks, one minute a piece, max. Personas, I didn't talk about personas, but you kind of might know what they are. What's a persona? Types of, types of people. Type. Yeah, so you went out and you talked to like 20 people. You know, some of you talked to 100 last night, right? And you get a sense for kind of types of people, right, that are out there. And so four types of dog caregivers. Just lay, you throw them out. Dogs, like really Name them. The identity of the dog. Um, obsessed with it. Dog obsessed. Yeah. dog obsessed. Dog obsessed. Okay. Person who bought the dog for children. The children are okay. Just dog is just a pet. Just a pet. Just a pet. Just a pet. They're actually cat people. <laughs> Denial. Denial. I love that. Denial. Family <laughs> member. What's that? Family member. Absolutely. Okay. Right person. People who um, jog in parks. Exercise buddy? Oh, yeah. Dog. Exercise buddy. Yeah, okay, that's that. Or like part of your look and accessory. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Or <laughs> feminine. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, persona fools. You're so good at it. Okay, awesome. And then just the, um, so what we would do there is we'd say, what are different okay. opportunities Sorry, for those <laughs> different personas? Right? All so right. it's a way to take Hi. everything that you've kind of gathered out there and direct, direct the opportunity areas. Let's do that real quick. Let's pick one and give me a, how might we help suck with the dog X, whatever. Just take, take one and tell me how might we statement. How might we get the dog off their hands regularly? Great. Okay, I'm not gonna write them down. Great, yeah. That's this one, okay? Something um, that occupies the dog, that the dog would enjoy that they were actually How might we entertain the dog? Entertain the dog so that they're not so high maintenance, okay? Um, how about one for one more, um, the family member, other side of the spectrum? How might we increase their safety and confidence in the dog's safety or something? Ooh, increase their confidence. It's a really emotional one, right? Like, speaking for having people with new family members, like, you worry about your family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot. <laughs> Great. And so, like I said, if you were to test these and you wanted to decide which ones were the best ones, you could ask yourself, like, the how might we's that I can write from those? Are those good how many ways are they not really good? Is it really inspirational? Like do some of these, you know, you guys were really inspired to write a, some how many ways for these ones, right? And some of the other ones were harder. Maybe they're not the best persona because it doesn't feel that important. Like I can't, I don't feel like I can solve their problems. I don't, they don't have something that I can really help with. Or maybe I haven't framed it in a way that's that clear. 